Right, hello then. I'm here to talk to you about Matrix, which is my latest project that I've been working on for a while. Um, so, big bunch of words here. What is Matrix? It is a new federated open ecosystem for real-time communication. That's a big bunch of marketing speak. It's new. Um, we've looked at a lot of things that have been done in the past, like IRC and XMPP and email and so on, and we've said, well, what have they done right? What have they done wrong? What can we learn from this? Let's try and do something a bit better. It's federated. What that means is anybody is free to run their own thing and keep their own data. You don't have to be beholden to anybody else. Uh, you can run your own thing. Um, it is an open ecosystem. What, what ultimately we're doing is building a specification with a reference implementation, and we encourage people to say, look at our spec, point out if we've done anything really silly, uh, point out if we're doing anything you know, new and different, uh, try and implement it yourself, build your own clients, build your own servers potentially, um, go out and play with it. Um, and it's for real-time communication. Um, because we've looked at things like email, email seems to be working pretty well in the world, um, but it's not very real-time, but otherwise it seems to do most things very nicely. Um, so we're mostly stealing ideas from, from there, but we're also stealing a bunch of things from XMPP. Um, because XMPP has some problems. Um, you connect to XMPP, you've got no back scroll, so you can't read history, uh, start up a new client on your, f on, say, your phone, you've just got nothing. Um, there are uh, other things. Um, it uses XML streamed over a socket, which is great for breaking people's heads and everything, and basically nobody likes it. Um, and um, it's extensible. Um, all you have to do is read the database of, of hundreds of um, uh, XMPP extension uh, protocols and work out which subset of the 20 or 30 of them that you like the look of today. Uh, so there's some, some in there for backscroll and, and all sorts of things, but they're kind of messy, nobody likes them. Um, so what is Matrix? Um, we have a uh, backfill um, by default, um, so you connect your things and you can see all the history on a new device um, and you can scroll back the history for all of time. You join a public room, you can see everything. Um, it's JSON over um, HTTP because that seems to be the, the new fun thing. That can't be a minute already. No. Good. Um, <laughs> right. Um, uh, and um, uh, in comparison to XMPP, we have globally replicated rooms. So rooms don't have to live anywhere in particular, no single points of failure. It's all nicely replicated. And it's all based um, primarily on third-party IDs. Um, uh, I've said rooms, uh, no single point of failure. Yeah, um, some rooms can be, can be named, so you could have a room called Pearl, or you could just have an ephemeral room because you want to have a chat with a few people. Um, we support all these things. Um, so, for example, you can have a room name that looks like matrix on the matrix.org, um, and that's our real room that we use. Um, users live somewhere. You kind of have to live somewhere. Uh, you can pick your own domain name um, or you know, run your server yourself, or if you don't want to run it yourself, find some hosting provider that's going to host it for you or get your you know, mobile phone company to get serve you or something. And that's kind of what we're looking at. We have a profile so that we can have uh, email addresses, phone numbers, website URLs, avatar pictures, all, all the kind of usual stuff that people seem to want these days that, again, things like IRC and XMPP just cannot support. So, for example, you can have a username that is Leonard on matrix.org, and it kind of looks like that. But we don't want to really use third, um, new identity systems if we can avoid it. So the whole thing is tied very nicely to third-party IDs. So you can do lookups from... Uh, emails, phone numbers, Twitter, Facebook, through some trusted verification providers. Uh, I'm going to start speeding up a bit because I think I'm wasting time. Um, this is the number one question everybody always asks us. How do we have trusted identification in an open federated system? Well, DNS does it. Um, SSL does it. People seem to be happy with these things. We, we, we're going for the idea of a, a small carefully selected set of verification people who we trust to say, we verify that, uh, we're, we're happy that, that you can verify email or whatever. Um, so what do we have currently? Uh, it's currently invite only um, into the, the code base because it's very early implementation. Um, we're gonna launch it publicly um, at TechCrunch 1st of, of September, um, so everybody can come and have a look at it. Um, that's a screenshot that I made about two hours ago of what the current code actually does, a little web interfacey thing here. Because um, it's, it's Python implementation currently. Sorry about that, people. Um, but I've written a matrix 
uh, HTML uh, matrix Perl client. Uh, I put that on CPAN today, and it looks a bit like that. Um, so come and find us on matrix.org. Uh, you can email me at paul at matrix.org. Um, we'll be on GitHub. Well, we are on GitHub. Send us some IDs. Keep an eye out for us. We'll, we'll be there in public. And of course, eventually, you'll be able to join us on matrix at matrix.org. And that's it. Thank you.